very much to all the media for joining us. Happy New Year to all of you. You know, this is obviously a virtual press conference getting set for this Saturday's PBC live on Fox. Uh, we certainly miss being all together in Los Angeles, but due to social distancing and COVID-19, this is the way of the world for right now. But we are here for this upcoming Saturday night's PBC on Fox, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific time from downtown Los Angeles, the Shrine Auditorium, as the IBF Super Middleweight Champion of the World, Caleb Sweethands Plant, will put his title on the line against the former world champion, the mandatory challenger, Caleb Truex from Minnesota. We go live 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific time on Fox and Fox Deportes. A few hours before PBC on Fox, we will be live on FS1 with former two-division world champion Francis Bartholomew in our feature bout. To begin the night, you will see the undefeated super welterweight sensation. He continues to climb up the ranks and really looks to make a big statement here in 2021. Joey Spencer will be in action against Isaiah Seldon. Also, our co-main event, a matchup between two undefeated heavyweights as Michael Coffey will score off against Armani Rock. And then in our main event, Caleb Sweet Hands Plant, who will be headlining on a Fox platform for the fourth straight time, will square off against Caleb Truex. All being brought to you by TGB Promotions and Sweet Hands Promotions and presented by Premier Boxing Champions. Also want to thank those that are in the bubble in downtown Los Angeles, the TGB Promotions crew, Brittany Goose and Brown there handling business along with the Life in Motion group, Thorsten and Company as well. So Without further ado, we want to start off with the challenger first. 31-4-2 is his record. Went over to the UK and ripped the title away from James DeGale back in 2017. Please welcome from the great state of Minnesota. Here is Caleb Truax. Caleb. Hey, good to be with you guys. Can you tell us about how you're feeling heading into this fight? I feel good. I feel real good. I feel healthy. Feel ready to go. Determined to to get my title back and uh, ready to put on a good show for the fans and everybody out there watching on Fox. Turn it over to the undefeated champion, twenty and O. He made his homecoming defense last February against Vincent Weigenboots before a raucous crowd at the Bridgestone Arena in Nashville, Tennessee. He continues to just shine every single time out. It's fourth straight venture, main eventing on Fox. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Caleb Sweet Hands Plant. Caleb. What's going on? Into this fight. Feeling good. Um, had a great camp, great sparring. Um, no restrictions throughout camp, whether it was, you know, getting a strength and conditioning or the boxing gym or bringing in sparring or getting to the track or anything like that. So uh, I'm feeling good. Weight's good. Ready to go. Both of you, I'm going to go with, uh, obviously, Caleb Plant first. Uh, what has life been like in the bubble for you guys? Caleb, this is your first time in the bubble. Champ, what has that been like for you? How's the experience been? Um, it's been good. You know, we got here yesterday and I just been, you know, in the room, kicking my feet up, uh, just relaxing. So playing a little Call of Duty. <laughs> now I'll turn it over to the challenger, Caleb Truex. Caleb, uh, what has the bubble been like for you and, and things along those lines? Have there been any, you know, changes that you've had to deal with? Uh, no, we just got in yesterday uh, from, from Minneapolis and, and uh, got some good sleep last night. I, I don't got... Uh, Two kids and a dog crawling all over me, so I was able to uh, get a little, uh, get a little sleep and feel good. And what kind of statement are you looking to make here on Saturday night, live on Fox? There'll be millions watching here in the United States and all over the world. But what kind of statement are you looking to make on Saturday night? Just a dominant performance, um, like I have in my last uh, three or four outings, or whatever, whatever it's been throughout my whole career. You know, just to put on another dominant performance, defend my title once again, and uh, see what's next. Ruax, in your mind, uh, how do you see the path to victory against Caleb Plant? Not giving away your game plan, but but how do you see you being able to pull off the W and once again become a world champion? Uh, 
Caleb Plant's a good fighter. He's He's got good speed. He's got good ring IQ. And I'm going to have to be at my best to beat him. And I feel at my best. I feel healthy. And I feel my pressure and my experience and just my determination is, is what's going to uh, be lead me to be successful. Ed, in talk with Caleb Plant, can you tell us about where the, uh, you know, if you would just want to go ahead and tell us specifically, but I believe that there was a tweet that Caleb Truex, and Caleb, I will let you respond to this, but for Caleb Plant, the champ, you know, the, the, the tweet that was sent out a few years ago, did you use it as bulletin material heading into this fight against your challenger? Uh, yeah, that's something that's definitely been a motivating factor. You know, uh, with only 11 fights, wherever he was in his career, whatever he was doing, you know, for him to, you know, hope that I get knocked out or, you know, only room enough for one Caleb or whatever silly shit he was saying, you know, instead of wishing for somebody else to knock me out, why don't you step up and do it? You know, that, that's big talk come from someone who had as many fights as you have when I only have 11 fights. You know, why would someone like me even be on your radar uh, at a point in time like that? But now, you know, look, the tables are turned. And uh, all that determinate, you know, my determination and, you know, my pressure. Every guy I fight, they've had determination. Every guy I fight, they come to bring the pressure. Every guy I fight, they come to walk me down. They come to cut off the ring. And what happens? I wind up throwing more punches than them. I wind up landing more punches than them, whether it's Jose Uzgatagi or any of the last two guys I fight. So, you know, all that sounds good. It sounds good for the media. But when that bell rings, it's a different story. That personally, even a few years ago, now that you're the champ, you're like, all right, now is my opportunity to go ahead and, you know, you know, prove my not prove myself, but, uh, you know, make, uh, you know, make him pay for that tweet that, you know, you didn't take too kindly. What's the question? So now you get your opportunity to be able to go ahead and, you know, inflict some quote unquote revenge and stuff against uh, Truex for what he said. Yeah. I mean, what you said, I get to go in there and uh, make him rethink about, you know, talking to me like that. Respond the challenger from Minnesota, Caleb Truex. I want you to tell your side of the story. So can you go ahead and expound on that? Yeah, I remember uh, not. Now that it's been brought back up, I remember why uh, why I tweeted that is because he was uh, he was in the ring with a guy that that uh, uh, had no business being in the ring with, and, and I didn't like the way he was he was showing him up, and uh, so I was cheering for the other guy. But uh, uh, that was a long time ago, and uh, the great thing about boxing is we get to settle it like men in the in the ring. You don't like kind of showing him up. It's supposed to, I'm supposed to let it be closer than that, like some of your fights. I'm supposed to just get in there and be boring, and you know not have any wow factor just because you can't do those things just because you've never done any you've never done any of those things to any level of opponent that you've ever fought so just because i can get in there and do those things you got an issue with that i just go do my work and and uh get the wins i don't need to show nobody up man how's that work how's that worked out for you especially a person that had no business being in the ring with you how many guys have you been in that haven't had business being in there with you lots of them yeah, lots of them, exactly. I know business being in there with you. Lots of them, exactly. But just because you can't do those things doesn't mean that you should be hating on me that I can do those things because I'm going to show you up the same way I showed him up. We'll see, man. We'll see. Okay, we will see. I'm going to show you up just like I showed him up. All right, we'll see. Yeah, and just because you can't do those things don't mean that you need to – you've been in pl- the ring with plenty of people that didn't have no business being in there with you. Flat, what are you looking – what do you want to do – to Caleb Truex on Saturday night. Caleb, I'm going to ask you the same thing. Caleb Plant, champ, what do you want to do to Caleb Truex on Saturday night? It's going to be a dominant performance, and he's getting stopped. So either Sal can throw in the ring, either his team can throw in the towel, or I'll throw in the towel for him, or the ref can step in and do his job. Your response to that? I want to win, man. Any way it takes, that's that's how I approach all my fights. I just want to win. I don't care how it goes. I just want to win. Sounds good. You want to win. I'm going to win. There's okay. a big difference. All right, man. Yep. All right, man. See you on Saturday. And and remember, True, remember the tweet that you said, because I'm going to remind you that. I'm going to remind you that in there, all that determination you got, cutting off the ring, coming to fight me. You don't piss me off now. Hey, right, brother. Yeah. You have fought overseas. You know, you fought some high-level guys over the course of your career. 
Do you think that your experience will play a factor in this fight? I believe so. I mean, I, I've been in the ring with the better fighters and I've had more fights and, and uh, I'm a veteran and, and uh, that's that's what uh, boxing is all about is, is gaining experience and, and doing those things in the ring. So I, uh, I, play, I think that'll play a big factor. What do you want to go ahead and respond with in the sense that, you know, the, the experience factor in terms of what he just, you know, stated? At 19 years old, he had just started boxing. At 19 years old, I was a Golden Glove national champion, five-time world champion, nine-time national champion. I then had international duels, Team USA duels, been to plenty of national tournaments. Everybody that I fight has more fights than me. As a pro, everybody that I fought has had more experience than me. As a pro, but just because you got more fights don't, does not mean that you have more experience than me or that you're better than me. And uh, this is not, he is not my toughest opponent. Jose Uzgatagi is my toughest opponent. And uh, like I said, I'm going to go, the, the, whoever I fought when he was tweeting about me, he didn't like how I was showing him up. I'm going to show him up the same way. So For Caleb Platt, and then we're going to open it up to the media. But Caleb, this fight against Caleb Truex, uh, you know, Tom Brown, who is not here from TGB Promotions, is promoting this event and, and is very excited for Saturday night PBC on Fox, Caleb Plant against Caleb Truex. But this is your second straight mandatory, correct? So Caleb Truex is your mandatory. So the mindset for you is to take on this mandatory. So then, you know, if you're successful on Saturday night, then you have the open door to take on any fight you want. Is that correct? Correct. Me and my team sat down. You know, the IBF is a, a, a strict sanction of body when it comes to their uh, mandatories, and they're usually the only one that won't waive a mandatory for a bigger fight or a unification fight. And uh, we wanted to do back-to-back mandatories that way moving forward. I got a year free worth and clear, uh, you know, to make those unification fights happen. So, you know, I'm not looking past them. I know I'm focused on the task at hand, completely focused on the task at hand, and um, I'm just ready to get in there and fight. Over to, uh, you know, he just celebrated his birthday about a week ago. Tim Smith, the director of PR for PBC. If he wants to open it up for questions from the media, joining us around the world virtually. Tim. Yeah, if anybody wants to ask a question, just raise your hand and we will try to get to you, okay? So the first question is from uh, Miguel Maravilla. Go ahead, ask your question. Hey, Caleb, how's it going? First of all, man, you're you're back in L.A. where you won your first title. You mentioned the Uskateki fight was your toughest fight. What does this fight symbolize for you going into 2021? Um, you know, it, it's a it's a new environment fighting in the bubble and uh, no fans. So I feel like, you know, just preparing the way the camp was different and, and on fight night, you know, will just be another feather in my cap and you know, like I said, it'll be my second mandatory back to back. And, um, you know, just uh, we'll, we'll see what happens after that. But right now I'm just I'm focused on the fight and um, just ready to get in there and do my thing. OK, we have a question from Jim Conlon. Go ahead, Jim. Hi, guys. Um, hi, Caleb. Uh, Caleb Trax and Caleb Plant. Uh, guys, uh, just in relation to the age difference here, uh, 28 uh, Caleb Plant, uh, 37 uh, Caleb Trax. Uh, to both of you, uh, Caleb Plant, do you think it's going to be a major difference in terms of stamina and fitness in the fight? And how do you respond to that, Caleb Trax? Um, you know, I, don't, I don't know where is, uh, I don't know what he's got going on, but, you know, I feel like that um, – when it comes to boxing, I'm better in every aspect. I feel like I can box better. I can f fight off the ropes. I can fight in the center of the ring. I can use the whole ring, you know, fight off my front foot, off my back foot. I can throw punches and bunches. I got a good jab. Uh, I just feel like I have all the tools to, you know, whatever um, situation we're in, whatever it calls for, I can make it happen. Okay, the next question is from Cameron Buford. Yeah. Go ahead, Cameron. Ask your question. Hey, hey, Caleb, this question is for Caleb Plant. You always stay in shape, uh, appear to be ready to fight at all times. What's been different about this training camp during COVID uh, that has you just as confident as you always been in, in for your fights? 
Um, well, again, you know, we, we, we didn't have any restrictions uh, as far as being able to get to strength and conditioning or, you know, to the boxing gym, to bring in sparring, to put sparring up, uh, to get to the track or run my miles or anything like that. And um, I had a great pre-camp as well with my dad and Justin and then with strength and conditioning with Coach Wade. And uh, even the weeks prior to, you know, my five or six week pre-camp, um, you know, I was putting in work throughout the whole pandemic. So um, I knew when the pandemic hit that it was time to get right back to work right then. Um, and that would be a, uh, another chance and opportunity for me to set myself ahead of the pack because I knew either, you know, people wouldn't have access to a gym or able to train or they would feel like it would be a good time for it to chill and relax. And I knew right then that that was my opportunity to once again, you know, as far as work, work goes, you know, separate myself. Thank you. We have a question from, uh, we have a question from Lim Satterfield. Go ahead, Lim. Okay, hey, Caleb, how you doing? I assume you're talking you got, you got to tell me. You got to tell us which Caleb you're talking to, man. <laughs> oh, I'm talking to Caleb. <laughs> Caleb Plant. Caleb Plant. How you doing, Caleb? What's going on? Yeah, sir. Hey, so um, how much of the motivation that we hear is just you, and how much of it is motivated by what the other fighters have done? Yuzi Katagui, you had a back and forth with him. Um, Mike Lee... Um, it was about his education and kind of, you know, it seemed to be. And then I want to know how each of those was different and then talk about your motivation for Caleb Truax and how, you know, how that is compares. Um, so just the mo the motivation factor in the Jose fight and the Mike Lee fight and the Vincent fight? Yeah. Yeah. Well, not the Vincent fight so much, okay. but okay. this one, because the visceral – focus that you seem to have for this fight to me reminds me of both of those in the the Uzikatagui fight and the Lee fight. I mean, and you were able to dominate them viciously. Yeah. Um, the motivation factor in those two fights was just to win that world title and, you know, keep the promise that I said that I would uh, accomplish, you know, with winning that world title and who I would bring that world title to. And uh, not only for who I would bring it to, but, you know, just to accomplish that for myself. And, um, you know, just to properly introduce myself to the world. You know, I, I know I was an underdog in that fight at the time. Uh, Jose was a guy that no one was wanting to fight. He stopped uh, Andre Durrell twice. Um, and, uh, you know, I just wanted to show the world who I was because, you know, I, I knew who I was, but I needed to properly introduce myself to the world. And then with the Mike Lee fight, it was just, uh, you know, I didn't like his attitude. I didn't like how uh, he was talking. And so I needed to put him in his place. And then I'm going to do the same thing with Caleb Truax, too. He don't, he don't like how I was showing up a fighter. That's what you're supposed to do. This is a sport. That's what you're supposed to do is dominate. Mm -hmm. And just because he can't do the things that I can do, because he's never been able to do the things I can do. It's like he hates on that. I don't know if maybe that strikes a, you know, strikes his ego or, you know, whatever the situation may be. But that's what you're supposed to do is show fighters up. The best, in the, the best to ever lace up a pair of gloves when they get in there with a the fighter, they separate themselves and they dominate. And so I guess he's got an issue with that. But he's going to really have an issue on January 30th because he's going to get shown up the same way. Next question is from... Danny Flexen. Go ahead, Danny. Well, I've just got um, two questions, both for Caleb Truex, if that's okay. That's um, okay. Thank you. Uh, Caleb, coming into this Again. fight, there's been a lot of talk about what Caleb Plant does next. So in terms of fighting Canelo or some of the big names in the division, has that um, come into your knowledge and, and has it been used by you as a motivating factor that you're being slept on by some quarters? Yeah, I, uh, I love being in that position. Uh, it was the same position I was in when I fought James Gael, and, and it's what motivates me to, to be at my best. And I think I fight at my best when I'm underdog and, and people are counting me out. Uh, I love proving people wrong, and, and it's just uh, just gives me extra motivation in the gym and in the ring on fight night. And you weren't um, entirely happy with your last performance. I read some comments from you that 
you weren't happy with the lack of sharpness and you were going to go back in not long after, um, but the opponent pulled out, unfortunately. So you weren't able to fight twice in a short space of time as you'd planned. So there's been a long gap again for this one. What what have you done to kind of combat that in the gym and so on? Uh, just staying active in the, in the gym, like always. I'm always in the gym. And and uh, we had some restrictions in Minnesota due to due to COVID. But uh, thankfully, my gym is, is basically a private gym. So uh, I have access to it. I have a key. I can get in there whenever I want. And this winter has actually been real mild in, in Minnesota. So I'm able to get my road work in. Uh, as normal and and uh, I've been able to just stay busy and stay active. Thank you. Okay. Uh, going back to uh, the top, I see Miguel uh, Maravilla. His hand is still up. Do you have a question, uh, Miguel? Yes. Okay. Go ahead. What is what does Caleb Truex represent for you before uh, before all the other, you know, possible fights ahead for you? What does he represent? Yes. Uh, another mandatory, a back-to-back -back mandatory, you know. I felt like that. That's what I was saying earlier. Uh, he's a back-to-back -back mandatory and just another opponent in front of me. And after I get this out of the way, then I'll move on to the next. So I don't, I don't really know other than that. What do you mean? Okay. What does it represent? Okay, we have uh, Jeremy. Uh, go ahead, Jeremy. Ask your question. Hi. Yes, I have a question for for both uh, Mr. Plant and Mr. Truax. Um, first to Caleb uh, Plant. Uh, this is your first experience in a, a crowdless bubble format. So far, do the changes impact you in any sort of significant way? Um, no, no. This is the you know, if you're a champion, then you're able to adapt and adjust. And, uh, you know, no matter what life throws at you, whether that's things inside the ring, outside the ring. And so, like I said, I feel like this will just be another feather in my cap. You know, at the beginning of my pro career, there weren't hardly anyone in the stands. And when I first started out on this journey with me and my dad, you know, there was nobody clapping. There was nobody cheering. You know, he was my only fan. And so, um, you know, he may feel like he's an underdog in this fight, but I feel like overall I've been the underdog my whole career and moving forward, I'm the underdog. So I still have that B-side mentality. I carry that with me uh, into training and uh, I carry that with me into the ring as well. So, you know, I don't care who's looking past him and what they say about him. It doesn't matter what they say. It matters what I say. And I say that I'm not looking past him, but I am looking through him and uh, I'm just ready for Saturday night. So. Uh, a follow-up to you, Caleb Plant. Uh, you said that you plan on ending this fight with a with a knockout. What are you seeing from from Caleb Truax that makes you confident that this will be the end result? Um, nothing particular. I just feel again like I'm I'm better in in all aspects of the game. You know, I've been doing this for a really long time at a high level, um, and so you know, I just don't really feel like that what he presents or brings to the table can stop what I bring to the table. Okay, we have another question from Jim Conlon. Jim, go ahead with your question. Yeah, um, this is for Caleb uh, Truex. I suppose, uh, Caleb, uh, in terms of opposition that you faced, uh, do you think it's a tiny bit uh, disrespectful? You mean you took Daniel Jacobs uh, to the wire and you were uh, Daniel Jacobs was very lucky uh, to get over you. And do, do you feel maybe that uh, Caleb Plant is at the same level as Daniel Jacobs? Uh, that, that's to be determined. You know, Daniel Jacobs is a good fighter, and and Caleb Plant is a good fighter too. But uh, I'm not I'm not here to compare anybody until I'm in the ring with them. You know, uh, we we ain't gonna find out until, until I'm in there with them, and, and we'll see. Okay, we have Lola Lipsy. Go ahead, Lola, with your question. Unmute, unmute yourself, Lola. Okay. Hello. Hi there. Um, this is for Caleb Truex. Do you feel this is your last opportunity at this point in your career to get a world title shot? Uh, you know, I've, I'm kind of approaching in that way. Uh, I'm, I'm grateful to be in this spot as the mandatory challenger and, and uh, I, I want to leave everything in the ring and, and uh, I'm, I've been approaching it like it is my last shot. So uh, I'm leaving everything in the ring and, and going to make the most of it. 
Does it give you motivation hearing Canelo calling out your opponent? Or um, I don't know if it gives me motivation about Canelo calling it out. It gives me motivation to hear everyone not um, – not uh, taking this fight into account when, you know, saying Caleb Plant's going to fight Canelo next or anything like that. But I mean, it's got nothing to do with uh, with Canelo Alvarez. He, he, I think he called out uh, Caleb Plant before our fight was set up. So, uh, and then they, they, they couldn't get the, the terms together or whatever it was. So it has nothing to do with Canelo Alvarez. Thank you. Okay. And we have uh, another question from... Uh, Cameron Buford. Go ahead, Cameron. Hey, this is for Caleb Truex. Uh, Caleb, would you share with the people the best lesson learned at Likes Gym, uh, Likes Boxing Gym? Uh, <laughs> best lesson learned that Likes. Um, uh, just approach things the old school way, man. We uh, we work hard. We, we do things the, the right way. We do things the old school way. And uh, that's it, man. His best lesson learned will be on Saturday. <laughs> there you go. There, thanks, fellas. <laughs> okay. We have another question from Lim Satterfield. Go ahead, Lim. Okay. This is for uh, Caleb Truax. Uh, you there, Caleb? Yeah. What's up, Lim? How you doing, man? God bless, man. I'm doing all right. Hey, so um, I know you're an avid fisherman. <laughs> and uh, I know that your biggest catch so far was James DeGale. Um, I want you to talk about what you overcame before you even got in the ring, because I know you had some personal, we've talked about some personal things you overcame before you got in the ring and what you were up against. And what, how do you classify him in the world of fish? What would you call him? And by comparison, <laughs> by comparison, how would you characterize uh, Caleb Plant? Oh man, um, that's a that's a that's a layered question, man. <laughs> uh, um, I am a fisherman, and uh, they're they're in my book. They're both trophy fish, man. They're both trophy fish because uh, they're they're two of the best fighters in the sport. The Gale was at that time, and, and Plant is, is considered uh, the the one of the best, if not the best, in, in my division right now. And uh, um, you know, it takes uh, it takes your best effort to, to land that trophy fish. And, and uh, that's what I'm going to do on, uh, on Saturday night. Okay. We're going to take uh, one last question from uh, Jeremy. Jeremy, go ahead. Uh, for, for Caleb Truex, you've talked about it numerous times about how you're coming at this as possibly the last chance at a title. If this fight doesn't go the way that you want it, is there a scenario where this could be your last fight in boxing period? Uh, I, I don't, I don't, uh, ever think about that. You know, I, I, I approach every fight individually. I, I realize that, uh, you know, I'm 37 and, uh, it'd take a long time for me to get back into title contention if things don't go my way, but I don't approach anything with the mindset, like this is going to be my last fight. I think when a fighter does that, uh, they've already kind of conceded that, uh, uh they're done. So I, I don't approach anything like that. Okay, we I see we have uh, a new hand, so I'm going to go ahead and take this question from Mike Oregon. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, this is for Caleb Truax. Uh, Caleb Caleb Plant uh, addressed the age difference. W what do you believe the age difference will have? The kind of impact it will have on this fight? Uh, you know, who's to say? Uh, until we get out there and mix it up, I can't say. I, I feel great. I'm sure, he, like he said, he feels great. Um, I'm in shape. He's in shape. We just got to go out there and do our thing, man, and, and uh, uh, let, the, let the cards fall as they will. But um, it's tough to say before, before we get out there and mix it up. Okay. Going to turn it back over to my man, Ray Flores. Thank you guys very much, uh, the media, for joining us and asking questions. And I want to thank the boxers, but I'm going to turn it over to Ray to close out. Tim, and, and I want to keep the fighters on because I just want to go ahead and get, we'll start off with the challenger first, Caleb Truax, and also want to thank the media joining us from all over the world. I know various media members from the UK, overseas, so thank you all very much as well. But Caleb Truax, Saturday night, how is it going down live on Fox, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific time against Caleb Plant? 
I think it's a great fight. It's a, it's a clash of styles. I think that usually makes for a, a good fight for the fans that will be watching. Um, and I see my hand getting raised in the end, like always, man. I, uh, I, I'm confident. I'm going in to, to get the win, and, and that's what I feel I'll do. This call right now, as you know, what is the last thing you want to tell him before you guys step inside the ring on Saturday night? Was that, was that to me? What'd you say? I, what did you say? What's yeah. the last thing you want to tell him? What's the last thing you want to tell Caleb Plant? Um, see you on uh, see you on Saturday night, man. It's gonna be a good fight, and uh, we're gonna mix it up. Rex, thank you so much for the IBF Super Middleweight Champion of the World, Caleb Plant. How's it going down on Saturday night live on Fox? Going down with me, get my hand raised in a spectacular fashion. Like I said, I don't see this fight going 12 rounds, so people love knockouts, they should tune in. Caleb Truex as we end the call. What I want to tell him? Yeah, what's, what are the last things you want to tell Caleb Truex? Just from now till fight time, when you lay down at night, close your eyes, just know I'm coming for you, man. I'm coming for you. You you talking mess to me and talking about I didn't like how you were showing them up. This is a sport where you, that's what you do. You show people up because if you don't show people up, you get shown up. And Saturday night, you're getting shown up. Caleb Truax, thank you so much. Good luck, gentlemen. We can't wait for the fight on Saturday. Thank you. Thank everybody for the questions. Thank you very much to the media. We look forward to the weigh-in tomorrow. Then the fight live on Saturday night, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific Time, BBC on Fox. And Fox Deportes brought to you by TGB Promotions, Sweet Hands Promotions, and presented by Premier Boxing Champions. Have a great one. We'll see you in two days' time.